Hello, everybody. This is Jennifer Williams, and I am the podcast host of Lux Life. I have the pleasure today of having a guaranteed rate affinities, Elise Elizalde. You might remember Elise from an earlier episode that we had recorded with Nina Gonzalez and Natasha Robinson, also from Guaranteed Rate Affinity. Today, Elise is here on her own, and we are going to talk about uh, something that had come up recently in a closing. Uh, I represented the seller with my listing, and there was some terminology that we weren't quite sure what the definition was. So immediately, I got on the phone with Elise. Of course, as always, Elise answered her phone immediately and had answers for us that made that, that gave us that explanation that we were looking for. That way we could educate our clients and, and try to move forward. And we did. We ended up closing that deal. So without further ado, I introduce you to Elisa Lizalde. Take it away. Hi, friends. Happy to be here. Thanks so much for having me, Jennifer. I appreciate you as always. Anytime. Always a pleasure to have you on here. Blessed. Blessed, blessed, blessed. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you called me yesterday, I think it was, yeah. and had high drama at the closing it, table. It, it was. I think that, too, with our podcast, it also lets people know not only the fact that you're so responsive, but also gives the, you know, it's not always smooth. These transactions, you know, and having the key people, having your key team is definitely what sets us apart. As agents, 100%. as lenders, attorneys, everybody that you bring as your team. So, you know, that's again why I called Elise and said, No, oh, I said, help, help, help. Even though, and Elise was glad to, even though she wasn't involved in the deal, Elise was not going to get a commission out of this, but she stepped up and as a part of the team, she she knocked it out of the park. So, what can you explain a little bit about what that? That uh, oh my gosh, Elise call was <laughs> yeah sure. So and this is something I, I'm excited that you asked me on the podcast to talk about it because I think that it is something that with the mortgage market and the real estate market more generally kind of heading in the direction that it's heading, I do think I'm seeing these issues come up more and more. And what it was is yesterday Jennifer called me. They were sitting at the closing table, and as I understand it, um the buyer's lender had to, at the 11th hour, kind of restructure some things regarding the the financing because they're running into a problem with um, a high cost fail. That's what we would call it in the lending industry, meaning that the points and fees that they were charging to the borrower for the transaction exceeded a certain threshold. Um generally that threshold is 3%. Now that's dependent on the loan amount, but it's it's 3% of the loan amount. Any fees that the lender can charge um, that would realistically benefit them in any way, right? So underwriting fees, um, funding fees, any points in, you know, that we talk about all the time, discount points that are being paid to them, as well as any fees being paid to an affiliate of them. So many lenders have relationships with title companies or even sometimes insurance brokerages. Um, any of those fees are limited to 3% of the loan amount. If fees exceed that, then we can get in big trouble um, and the mortgage would be considered something called a non-qualified mortgage. It would fall out of our safe harbor purview, which helps us from, or keeps us, I guess, or protects us from getting sued by borrowers. So that's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. It is a lot. And, and something, you know, we, we're not going to disclose the address or the exact deal that we're talking about. But one thing that also came up, and again, it was always a learning process. We want to make sure that we're sharing with our audience too, like what we're going through real time. As Elise said, this happened yesterday. And immediately we were like, we have to jump on and we have to do an episode about this because if we're experiencing it now at the closing table, it's very likely that many others around across the country, around the world could be experiencing the same thing. So let's educate our audience. Um, one of the other things that had come up and how the attorney and I were trying to explain this to our clients, the sellers, and to help if like we needed to pivot or make a strategy, 
was when exactly would we have known? Because we had a clear to close. We had a clear to close. Everybody's at the closing table. Keys can or keys are there. We've jumped through an amazing amount of hoops to get to this point. And sure. you know, so we were so shocked to find out from yesterday. Yeah. So Elise, why don't you share when this would have been known? Because this, yeah, this so was a long time. Here's what I will say. If it's known, if it's if guaranteed rate affinity or guaranteed rate companies, I will I don't work for the any other guaranteed rate companies, but I would assume that generally all of our internal processes are almost identical, if not identical, right? We would know something like this when we're pushing the loan for initial disclosures. Now, so, so that means early on in the process, it was very surprising to get a call from you, Jennifer, saying, hey, we're at the closing table and, and finding this out now. Um, it's not impossible. And what I initially thought was, especially now that different mortgage companies and, and real estate companies are really kind of getting intermixed with each other. My initial thought was that some title fee must have changed while they were balancing final figures. And it just so happened that that title company had some affiliation with the mortgage company. And as a result, it now put them over this fee limitation or they had to charge the borrower to extend their interest rate lock and that that additional charge um, put them over limitations. Now, again, we're going to know about this stuff right up front. And as a loan officer, I'll know that we're right up against a threshold if we if we happen to be from the very beginning um, or basically as soon as it comes up. And realistically, like I, I have to eat that. The company eats that. We normally there's very little to that we can, that can be done. Um, other than eat the cost as a lender, we can't, we can't charge it. We're, we're obligated to cap ourselves at certain points and fees. So yeah, that's what I was shocked when you called. I was like, why didn't the lender just eat the cost? Right. Um, so I don't know. all of us were, we were so shocked and, and it's something that, you know, we, I, we really haven't experienced. I mean, well, quite honestly, we haven't experienced. I'll be honest with you. You know, I've been doing this a very, very long time. And to come up against something that's a def that is verbiage that I don't know, I'm very thankful again that I have you to le to lean on and to say because like, I mean I'm not going to know everything. Lending is not my space. That is not my forte. That is your forte. Re real estate is mine, and you know to have that there and then to find out that whether it was a mortgage broker, whether it was a lender that is in a different lender space, whatever the situation was, to know that they literally waited until the 11th hour. Now that yeah. closing was scheduled at noon or at 11. That closing was scheduled at 11 p.m. Central Standard Time yesterday. That closing did not fully fund and be final until about 3.30 yesterday. Yeah, that's well, can you imagine I mean, good on their document team for scrambling at the 11th hour. Yeah, I, I that, found out about right. it. But good that's for them. The but that's all of us. We're yeah. just, that's a lot of time. You know, and, and absolutely. That's the thing is like, I think it can be very frustrating. And that's why I like chatting with you, Jennifer, and being on the podcast. Because I think it can be really, really frustrating to home buyers and sellers, people that you know, I always say, let me take a step back. I always use this analogy. My job is to be fluent in mortgage finance, mm -hmm. right? Which is, and, and finance in and of itself is its own language and mortgage fam, uh, finance is an even more rare dialect of finance, right? Yes. Um, and I do not expect my buyers or sellers to be fluent in that language because they're probably not speaking it every day right? Unless they also happen to work in the mortgage space. Um, so I think it can be really frustrating when things pop up at any point in the transaction, but yeah. certainly when everybody thinks it's a done deal and it really just adds to the general, you know, that kind of general sense of fear that I think a lot of people have because I am guilty of it. I'm sure you are too, Jennifer. 
when we're dealing with such large sums of money, mm -hmm. it almost becomes like, oh, it's it's 10 bucks to us, right? But these are thousands of dollars that were yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars in some situations that were just kind of right. are nothing, right? They're just little <laughs> decimal points on paper to us, but I would lose my mind if I were the seller um, in this scenario, thinking that somehow this deal is going to blow up when they've already mentally prepared themselves for it being a done yeah. deal. Yeah, it was. And that, and I think too, like also bringing, um, having this space, create, having created this space, bringing you on and letting people know that, you know, I think I, I feel that there is that perception. I agree with you. You speak, you speak lending, you speak mortgage, fi mortgage finance. I speak real estate and construction. And that's just, those are my spaces. You are, that's your spaces. And together, you know, we make a great team. The, that being said, the great team that collaborates and works together and has people in their space that they can tap, that have the information, have the knowledge, have the will, have the drive to do what's right. You know, you didn't have to answer my call, but we did. You, you care enough about it to answer the call. So as the seller, you might think, oh, as the seller, what do I care what the lending is like for the buyer? I just care that it closes. Well, <laughs> hold on. You kind of do. And you kind of want to make sure, not kind of, you do want to make sure that you have that, that A team on your side to make these calls to then explain it to you. What, what happens if the seller was sitting at the closing table with us and I had nobody to call? Yeah. And the attorney had nobody to call, you know, because nobody thinks it's important and it is, it's, it's highly important. And totally, I, I think when you called me, I, I like, it's not like I presented a solution at all. It was more of, Hey, this is what's going on. Like all it was, was an explanation of what's going on. And hopefully that set everybody's mind at ease. Like, Hey, it's not an insurmountable problem. It's going to be a pain in the butt, but worst case scenario, no lender in their right mind that's already cleared a loan to close is going to say, oops, we can't do it anymore. Just means that they're going to have to eat some cost. And they were they're probably going to have to, right. But they had a large amount of cost. Them. And they were trying to avoid doing that, you know. Um, sure. And that's fair. I understand, you know, banks, they're lending a ton of money. They want to, they want to make sure that they're not doing it at a cost to them. But I think now, you know, one of the things that I'm seeing more of as a lender is like, People are so rate conscious because interest rates have been all over the place. And yes, yeah. I'm finding that I'm getting rate shopped more now than I ever have in my career, right? Um, and across the board, I talked to some of the top lenders in the country. Mm -hmm. I pay a ton of money to get coached by them and coach alongside them and talk to them daily. And that's kind of the feedback we've been getting. And the thing that I'm really preaching to my clients and that my referral partners are preaching is like who, who the lender is can be more important than the interest rate on your loan estimate, especially when all of us are pretty darn close to each other, right? Um, because I can tell you with 99.9% .9 certainty this is a situation that would not have come up at the closing table with my team. And again, it didn't kill the deal by any means. You guys closed yesterday. We're good. And it's just a little blip on the radar of the transaction. Everybody's happy, but in a super competitive marketplace, sometimes these are the things that can make or break things, especially when inventory is tight enough that yep. properties are worth more on the day that they close than the day that they went under contract. Sometimes I've seen sellers just look for any reason to walk because they know that they can get more several thousand dollars more from whomever their backup offer was, or if they relist yeah. it. So, yeah. That, that's the thing. It goes back to, I've had the same thing too. There was um, a listing that um, I was shopped against another agent and I mean, I stood my ground. I still will because the value add that we deliver, mm -hmm. you know, wasn't that much difference. But when you are sitting at a closing table or you have questions or it's nine o'clock at night and you've got something that's keeping you up and you send me a text message and I respond. Right. A hundred percent. It's like the thing. 
there's a reason why McDonald's, McDonald's serves more people every day, probably than any other restaurant in the world, right? Or they do, right? right. And there's a, yeah. there's a place and time for us to eat McDonald's. And there's also a place and time for us to go to Swift and Sons downtown and have a fi fine dining experience. And there's also, you know, uh, several places in between, right? At the end of the day, we're, they're all feeding you something. We're all going there to eat something. So we don't have to cook it ourselves at home. Uh, but it's just, it can oftentimes be, what experience do I want? Um, mm -hmm. What level of education as well? What exactly? You know, what, do you want? what what kind of connections? You know, how quickly can somebody pick up the phone and get an answer? You know, yesterday you gave us a definition to a phrase and a term. Rather than us going, you know, we could have rushed and went to Google and said, okay, but that doesn't have that personal experience. I mean, that's great. It's on Google. You can get the definition off there, but it doesn't have that same weight as talking to someone that I know, like, and trust. Right. hundred percent. Right? So you could have told me the moon is, is green and I'd believe you. You know what I mean? Because I know, like, and trust you that much that when we're, we're making that phone call, you know, you've got, I don't even have hesitate with the answer, with the response or repeating um, what you'd said, because it's, you know, your you know, your stuff, you know what you're doing. I mean, totally. Yeah. If like, we know we can Google what it's like on the moon, but if Buzz Aldrin tells me, I'll be like, okay, well he knows like, <laughs> he was there. Google he was wasn't. there, baby. He knows. So I, like, I trust him what he has to say. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I think before one thing I wanted to hit on too, while I have the opportunity about this kind of thing, when it comes to just kind of the nuts and bolts of ability. Well, it's, it falls under ability to repay. That's like the overarching guideline that this high cost limitations or cost limitations falls under. And um, prior to 2008 and the housing market collapse that came in 2008, lenders could just kind of lend willy nilly and do things that were not super regulated. Since that, that time, obviously we are, regulated maybe more than any other profession, you know, beyond medicine or something like that, like we're very highly regulated. And one of the biggest and most important guidelines that we have to follow is the consumer's ability to repay a loan. And as long as we are producing loans that generally meet these guidelines, right? Um, or that are generally what we would consider a QM loan or a qualified mortgage. It provides us as lenders with what they, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which is our governing body for the most part, um, it, it provides us with what we call a safe harbor, meaning that as long as we are doing our best and are regularly proving loan after loan that we are concerned with our consumer's ability to repay the loan, then if somebody defaults on their mortgage and they turn around and try to sue us, the government is saying, our governing body is saying, guaranteed rate affinity is protected against this lawsuit because they've shown day in and day out, time and time again, that they are doing things to ensure that their consumers can actually pay back the loans that they're being given. Um, and so I think sometimes clients and real estate, other real estate professionals don't realize the type of scrutiny that we have to go in, in um, when it comes to financing things, especially in a market like now, when someone's like, well, I just want to buy down my rate as low as it goes. Like, it doesn't really work that way. We we can't do that because we need to make sure that you're able to repay the loan at market rates or you know pretty darn close to market rates and that we're not charging you exorbitant fees up front to be able to get you to repay those things because that in and of itself could be considered predatory. So a lot of this is not because I, Elise Jordan Elizalde cares at all. Um, it's because those are, you know, we're regulated and it's my job to protect my consumers and protect the company that holds my license. Right. You know, cause sure. I, mean, I do care about guaranteed rate of any, I want them to stay in business so I can keep doing loans. So. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think they're, they're a great lender. They're a great company. Yeah. Um, you know, that's 
we've used them uh, personally in the past. So I, I'm, I believe in them that much. Um, and you know, with that being said, again, it goes back to having someone, you know, like and trust in someone that cares, someone that knows their job is passionate about their job. And I think our listeners and our viewers, when this does go to YouTube as well, you know, I think that they, they would get that you can hear the passion in your voice. And again, that's the difference, right? That's the, you want someone on your team that is going to have the knowledge, is going to know how to navigate the waters, is going to have that right team, all the team members behind them. And that can help guide you because this is the largest financial decision for most people. You know, if not the largest, one of the largest, they're only going to do this, you know, statistically, one of the last um, statistics, like somebody moves uh, nine times within their lifetime, you know, between mm -hmm. moving out of the, the parent's house, going to college, first apartment, so on and so forth. So if you think about the span of someone's life, and then you think about, let's slice it up into only a handful of times they're moving. It's each time they're doing this transaction, it's a big deal. So why you wouldn't want the best on your 100%. team, I you know, baffles me. <laughs> but it does. It, I think because people, and I respect it, right? People really care about their money. They work hard for it. We work super hard for our money. Um, and I'm not, he, a dollar is a dollar, babe. Like I, I want to save my clients. Totally agree. Yeah. Like I'm going to, if I can save you money, I'm going to do it. But you got to understand like, we, this is the most, if not the, like you said, if not the largest, it's certainly the most emotional financial decision that people are going to make. And like I mentioned, I mean, 2008 seems like it was just yesterday. It wasn't yes. every year since then, almost I, I monthly, I get an alert to my email. That's like this guideline changed this updated. This is new. You can't do this anymore. You have to do this now. Yeah. And I think that that just adds to the layer of, or the necessity of working with a team of people that really care about what they're doing and know, and have had the ability to make mistakes in the past, right? Like right. have just had the most at bats together. Um, because things are changing. It doesn't matter if you're the kind of, or you're an investor and you want to buy every year or every two years. Guaranteed something about the process in general has changed since the last time you purchased, period. Absolutely. You know what the process has? I think back to the first home that we purchased that was in 1991, that we were ecstatic to have 10% yeah. interest. I mean, we were, we were overjoyed because it was, it had been like, 12 and 13 and was all over the place and when we got 10 we were we just we thought we felt like we had won the lottery you yeah, know yeah. and had purchased that first home and the way the documents are signed the way that you know, we still went to a title company we still had real estate agents but just the way everything in the transaction was handled definitely has changed from then to now and yes I still remember sitting at the closing table for that very first home purchase, you know, and unless when we're talking about residential real estate, unless we're talking, you know, this, this doesn't always hit as much with the investor, um, you know, investors work a little differently as well. And I agree with you, the dollar is a dollar if I can save, but then there's also that theory of, you know, do you don't want to jump over a 20 to save a nickel, you know, yeah. you get what you pay for. There's so many analogies on it. Um, you know, it, it's just really do your homework and, and make sure you know your space, you know, make sure mm -hmm. the reviews are true reviews, aren't purchased reviews and, and pick up the phone and call one of us, yeah. you know, and see, because we're all very accessible now so much though. I, I like, um, I love Elise. I don't even want to use the word like, I love Elise so much that, uh, coming, we are going to be with Lux life and Elise is going to be sitting on this panel. It's an all female uh, panel, we have a variety of lenders in the lender space. And we'll we'll showcase more on that later um, when we do actually launch the panel. But it's something that we're going, so you can see not only from Guaranteed Rate Affinity, we're also going to see from other lenders what their take is, what they're seeing in the market. So then that way, mm -hmm. you know, again, we have to educate our audience because I feel like, you know, you watch the reality shows and you go through it a handful of times and you think, you know, but, and we go through it every day. So we're like, oh yeah, that's nothing. And, and we kind of sometimes have to be checked and forget the fact that this is what we do every day. Yeah. 
you know? But, but I don't take for granted the importance of, I'm so excited to be a part of the panel. Some of my like closest industry friends and colleagues are going to be on the panel. And I think that's super important too, when you're working with a professional is like, what's their relationship with other people in the industry? Because yeah. I can tell you right now, one of the other lenders on the panel, if I had a problem with a loan right now, I could pick up the phone and she could walk me through it, not mm -hmm. be concerned about, oh, I'm going to take the deal from Elise. She would give me A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This is yeah. how we're going to get your client to the closing table. And that's it. And I hope to be that type of resource for other industry professionals. And yeah, you just, the collaborative nature of real estate is something I think that reality TV misses and a lot of people yeah. miss. And I just, I'm so excited because I, I'm hoping that we can dispel a lot of the stigmas and kind of miseducation, um, hashtag Lauren Hill forever, um, that is out in the market these days and hopefully get people more excited about the process. Excited about the process and the fact that, you know, we're not, we're here to help you know, we are, we are in a serving industry. You know, I think people forget that, you know, think of, uh, oh, there we're, we're this, that, or the other, because we're in sales, but we're also in a very serving industry. You know, I'm, I'm surprised we don't have a degree of hospitality because we do have to have hospitality. You know, we're not just in sales and the collaboration, um, Elise was so generous to collab work with us for, with the Women's Council of Realtors Chicago, um, our bus tour, and also met with, uh, you know, caught up with several other lenders on that space as well. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. It's not about what brokerage firm you're with. Um, you know, we we all are people and we can move around. You know, one we can be here one day and move to the next move somewhere else to the next day. That that doesn't change how we feel. It shouldn't change how we feel about the person. You know, the knowledge is still the same. The connectivity is still the same. The phone number is likely still the same. It's just, you know, where they hang their license may have changed. So, and I'm, I'm super excited for this uh, all-female panel. Um, I, I think that it's going to, we have a powerhouse of, of women that are going to be honest and, and bring a lot of value and education to our audience. Um, you know, that all being said, Elise, I want to make sure uh, as we wrap up here, I want to make sure that you give out again, and we will put it in the description, your contact information. How does somebody get a hold of you? Phone number, email address, Instagram. Um, what do you have? What What do we do? How do we get you? Yeah, absolutely. So I see that um, I realize now like the 11th hour um, <laughs> myself that I have my maiden name on my, my description. Um, Laura only knows why I have that. I think it's just a carryover <laughs> from my name. <laughs> so I'm the treasurer of a local park board and everybody knows me as Elise Jordan on the board because that's the name I was, I, I served like a yeah. three-year term. And, but my husband's on the board. And so we just wanted to pretend like we weren't married. <laughs> so I kept it for that reason. And this is my Zoom account I use for it. Anywho, y'all can find me at Elise dot Elizalde, E-L-I-Z-A-L-D-E um, at GRA rate.com, Elise underscore Elizalde on Instagram. If you guys want to know everything there is to know about mortgages, but also my husband's hot take on Vanderpump rules and all other Bravo reality television, I highly recommend you follow me on Instagram because yep. it's a real trip. It's a real trip. Uh, but yeah, and you it guys is. can always reach me on my cell 574-276-3535. Three, three licensed in Wisconsin, Indiana, Illinois, and Florida. More licenses coming, but um, certainly got to have hold it down for the tri-state. So yeah, I say whoop, whoop. all right. And then in Florida, I love the I love the Florida one. You know, and that's the thing. Instagram, I, we all know Instagram's my jam. Um, that is that is my largest presence on social media. So um, if you can't if you can't remember what it is. Elise is we are connected um through my Instagram as well. So thank you so much everybody for listening. Elise, please stick around after us. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up. But thank you everyone for tuning in. Be sure to check back when this this panel hits. It's gonna be a great one. Jennifer Williams, Cobal Banker, Gold Coast Real Estate Agent, a Lux Life podcast, also Lux Life the brand. You can find out more information on jensellslux.com how to uh, either sponsor our show, be a guest. We'd be happy to have you and hear from you. Stay tuned. Thanks a lot.